Hey everyone, welcome to a special edition of Teach Me GP2040 CE. This is a tutorial series that shows you all about GP2040 Community Edition, including you know, how do I get it installed, how do I use it, and all sorts of other stuff. So in today's episode, I want to show you how to upgrade the HOTE42 pads from previous versions 0 0.73, 0 0.74, 0 0.75 to the newer 0.76 as of this recording. And generally the process here is more or less how you would upgrade other GP2040 controllers, but there is a little bit of a bump in that we're changing from a stock Pico into a specialty edition, so we'll show you that as well. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and land on the OpenStick Community GP2040 CE release page. And this is their GitHub. Um, as you can see, as of this recording, 0.76 is the latest. Now what we'll need are two things. So let's scroll down past all the updates and go to assets. First thing you want is Flash Nuke. Download that to a directory of your choice. I'm just going to use downloads here and I'll replace the copy that's there. Just make sure it's the newest, latest, and greatest one. Now you'll see there's a lot of these, but there's one that should stick out to us because we're using the OAT42, and that's this guy, the OAT42 flash. So go ahead and save that as well. Once that's done, just make sure you know where it's going and you're ready for the next step. The next step is to plug in our controller, and I'm going to be using the T16 for this example, but you can do it on the G series, the S series, the M series, doesn't matter. It's all the same stuff. Hold down start and plug it in. Now you should notice the web config mode is active. It's a little hard to see here, I understand, but it'll say web config mode on the screen if you have it. Uh, if you don't, such as in the case of the mini, it doesn't really matter. Let me show you how to go into web config, the actual web page. Up next, now that you're in web config mode, let's actually go to the web page that it has. So what you want to do is go to 192.168.7.1 in your web browser. And once you hit that, it should load the web configurator. And it should display what version you're on. So if you're already on 7.6, well, then you don't have to do anything, at least as of this recording, unless there's a 7.7 or so on. Anyhow, yeah, we could use this button to get the latest version, but I already did that in step one. And again, you can see the link for that in the box below. So there's that. All right, what I recommend you do right now is go through the settings and just manually note or take screenshots or do whatever you like to do to take note of the settings here. We can't bring those over from any previous version, unfortunately, so you're just going to have to either memorize them or write them down or take screenshots and save them somewhere, whatever you're going to do. Now, I do still recommend you come into Data Backup and Restoration and make sure everything's checked, hit Save, and then you can save a backup file. It's not necessarily that you're going to use it in 0.76 because you're not going to be able to. However, if you have to come back to your current version, then you can at least restore from backup. So there is a little bit of utility there. One other thing I recommend you do, come up to configuration, custom LED theme. And if you have custom button color set, I would come in here and, whoop, this is too big now. Make sure you save the color you have set. That way, when you come back, you have to reset all of this. You'll at least have them set to go and you don't have to program them again like I did. And that's only if you have a custom theme set. If you don't have that, then you're fine. Up next, we need to boot this guy into what's called boot cell mode. So what you'll do is once you've gotten all your settings, you're comfortable, you know what you want things to be set to, you come over here to reboot and then tell it USB boot cell mode. Now, I would just leave the tab open. You can close this and you should see something if you're in Windows pop up RPI-RP2 and a drive letter that gets assigned to it. And we'll get into that in a bit, but just leave this tab open. We'll come back to it. The next step is to open the file manager of your choice. I'm just using Windows File Explorer here, but you can use you know, whatever's comfortable for you and go to the place where you've downloaded Flash Nuke and GP2040.76 for the OAT42. 
I'm going to leave this on. I am still in boot cell mode, and you can tell because this E drive says RPI RP2, and this is where we'll be dropping things. So what I want to do is first nuke it, and then I'm going to use this flash nuke. All I do is drag and drop, click drag and drop. It'll disappear for a second. Don't worry. That means it's working. Once it comes back, there you go. You'll have the drive again, but now there's nothing on here. So that's okay. What we're going to do next is repeat the process, but with the OAT42 UF2 file. So drag it down here. It'll take a little bit longer to copy, and that's totally normal. So don't worry about it. Just leave it be. Do not unplug. And I would, if you want that extra comfort level, close every other application that you can, just so it doesn't interfere with it. All right. Once it copies in, you should see it reboot. As you can see, I'm getting lights and the splash screen, and I'm back to factory default settings. So we've successfully now upgraded to 0.76, but we're not quite done. Now, remember when I said you should leave that web tab open so you can come back to the configurator? Well, this is a good time to do it just so you can set up your controller again. So what we're gonna do is now you should be safe to unplug. Once you see the status screen, the lights come back on and that drive is gone. Go on unplug, hold down start, and then plug back in, and that'll trigger web config mode once again. So very easy. And then just come back over to the web config tab you have and refresh it. Now you're on 0.7.6, and it's time to just reconfigure things the way you like. Do not, do not, do not import that 0.75 or earlier file. It won't work, you'll just break stuff. Trust me, I tried. For example, I'm gonna come in here. I don't like neutral, I like last win. And most everything else here is fine for me, so I want to go down here and save. Once again, just go through the other settings here. You'll notice some things have changed since earlier versions, but it's really no issue to get going with. Uh, once again, with the custom LED theme, you may have to enable it again, that's fine. And if you've saved those colors, you should see them appear in the little drop down here. I know because I have the zoom on, it's not gonna show properly, but maybe it'll show here. Ah, it's still too big. Anyhow, just go through and set the options you need and you should be set to go. But before you leave web config, come up to configuration, go to data backup, and then save another backup. It's always good to have backup copies and that way you know, if you start noticing weird things, you need to flash 0.7.6 again, then you can at least restore the data. Once you're all done with that, go ahead and reboot and go into controller mode and you're set to go. If you follow the steps in this video, you should have no problem updating your OAT42 product to the latest version. And just in case, if you have problems getting into boot cell mode, all the OAT42 products have this. There's a little hole and this is the T16, but the others have it as well. Just use, I just use a little SIM tool. You can use an unfolded paper clip, a small enough screwdriver bit will do it. Just hold that. You should have a little button inside and then plug it in and you will automatically be in boot cell mode. And you can flash nuke from there, then put on the latest firmware and you should be fine. If you're nervous or worried about updating your firmware, don't worry, if you follow this guide, you should have no issues at all. Again, if you do run into trouble, it does seem like you bricked it, use that boot cell button in the back and you should be able to flash nuke it from there and try again, so don't panic. Otherwise, you should have no problems updating and if you found the information in this video helpful, hey, please leave a like, I really appreciate it. And if you wanna see more of my stuff, subscribe. And of course, you know, the usual YouTube refrain. If you have questions, suggestions, comments, etc., you know, leave them down below. I really appreciate that, and I'll try and get back to them with in a couple days. So, this has been Zeveros, and teach me GP2040CE.